Hi, this is Joel Schenker. I'm the program director for the Neurology Residency Program. I'm going to try and take the possible applicants to our program on a quick tour of our facilities. Here I am in my office in the neurology department, and I'm going to leave from here and walk through the various places. This is the first time I've ever used iMovie, so please forgive me if I don't get this right. We'll have residents do a virtual tour with applicants on the interview day. Of course, with COVID, everything's virtual. Here's the conference room that we would meet and have conferences in when we're able to meet live. Right now, everything's still on Zoom. This hallway here on the bulletin boards, we keep track of recent publications and activities of residents, other announcements and things. I'm doing the initial recording of this video on a Sunday when there's not a lot of people here. That's why the hallways are empty. Here's Claire Lammert's office. Claire's the program coordinator. And uh, she has a sign on the door that still says, come on in. During the corona era, virus era, we're keeping the doors closed so that people can be in their offices and not have to keep their mask on. Here's the resident's office where we have a desk for every resident. There's desktop computers for people to be working on patient notes and on whatever other activities they're doing. Everyone has their own desk and workspace. We have a smattering of books as well. This is where their mail comes as well every day. Hopefully they're checking. We're on the fifth floor of the building. This is called the Clinical Support and Education Building, one of several buildings on the campus of the medical center. We have essentially the entire floor. I'm just going to walk. Uh, this is one continuous recording until we get outside. So I'm just walking from the neurology department offices over to the uh, stairs. We'll go up one floor and then we'll walk directly over to the hospital side. It's a nice sunny October day when I'm recording this. Here's the view of uh, from the building. Quick, got a quick view. <laughs> You're not going to see it. But on the actual interview day, hopefully the residents uh, who are taking you on a tour will show you some things. Here we're on the sixth floor of the building, and this floor is almost entirely devoted to uh, simulation center activities. There's a huge simulation center where we can do all kinds of teaching and learning opportunities. We use it for the residents. We use it for the medical school. Different types of testing is done in this facility as well. Now here's a pedestrian bridge from the CSNE building uh, over to the University Hospital building. And here, as soon as we enter, we have the swamp where the neurology residents who are on the primary inpatient team sit. I'm trying to negotiate opening the door while I operate the camera as well. There's Dr. Besner, Tracy Besner, one of the PGOA2 neurology residents, working hard as all residents should. pretending to ignore me. I'm supposed to be a program director. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, now, finally. <laughs> Tracy was a medical student at University of Missouri, and we were lucky he chose to stay on and do his residency here as well. So at this point, he's a few months into his PGY2 year. Here we are in October, so he's able to be on call fairly autonomous from the senior residents. We have senior residents available all the time, but by this point in the year, junior residents are able to run activities pretty well when they're on call on weekends and on nights. Various other support services are along this hallway. And uh, here we're looking at uh, the stroke swamp. 
just down the hall, so we have a, a place for the residents and the teams to sit and meet and look at films and other things for both the primary inpatient team, as we just saw, and here for the acute stroke team. Uh, this is in addition, of course, to the place where the residents have their own offices, which is also a place where they may wish to sit and get work done. Here in this hallway, we are going to continue towards the um, sixth floor of the hospital proper. Um, had we continued where we just saw the stroke swamp, we could have gone over to the ICU side of the hospital. So here as we approach these first set of elevators, these are elevators that patients would use or that the physicians might use as we're now in one of the hospital hallways proper. So now we're walking past patient rooms and I deliberately tried to pick a time in the middle of a day on a Sunday when hopefully there are not a lot of patients about. I don't want people to feel uh, uncomfortable if they see someone with a camera coming down the hall. So I'm going to move quickly and I'm not going to stop and pause very much. Uh, but this is the main floor. This is now the seventh floor of the hospital. Different floor numbers depending on which building we're in. Um, and here's where most of the neurology and neurosurgery patients are housed. But of course, they could be housed anywhere throughout the hospital proper. But that's the main neuroscience floor. Just to the right here is uh, the epilepsy monitoring unit. So we passed the door where there's a technician, even as we walk past, who's looking at EEG activities as we're continuing to monitor patients. Here now at the end of the hall, we're going to take a left and go through another pedestrian bridge that connects over to another wing of the hospital where most of the intensive care units are housed. You can see through this uh, window, we're looking off to the east. That's the Next Gen Precision Health building that's under construction, a huge multi-million dollar facility, the medical director of which is our own Richard Barron, who is also the executive vice chancellor um, and happens to be in the Department of Neurology. That building is not yet finished. It's uh, another year or so from completion. It's right next to where the outpatient facilities are for the neurology department, and I'll be walking over there later. Here we're walking into the uh, wing of the intensive care unit that is uh, taking care of the neurology patients. So the neuroscience ICU is a facility that handles both neurology and neurosurgery patients. To get there, we'll be going through this newer part of the hospital. This wing was constructed, oh, I guess about maybe four or five years ago. I'm not quite sure exactly when. Um, and so this area right here is predominantly orthopedics, and the double doors we see down the hallway is the neuroscience ICU, and I'll take a quick poke into there as well. As you can see, some people are already wearing their masks. We're in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic, and so everyone hopefully is wearing their mask right now. Um, so we're in the neurosciences ICU right now. As we go to the very end, we're now at the easternmost end of the hospital. And again, you can see the uh, still under construction Next Gen Precision Health Initiative Center. Uh, just to the left is the building where we see our neurology outpatient clinics. Going back through the neurosciences ICU, we'll go back and take an elevator downstairs and quickly go through the lobby and go outside. That's just to prove to you that I was right. It's the neurosciences intensive care. See, there's a sign. It has to be real, there's a sign. Facilities are really generally quite well maintained. That said, a hospital is a hospital, and hospital beds are hospital beds, and I don't imagine that uh, what you'll see in one hospital room in one place that you're interviewing for residency will be dramatically different than another. 
Here's a uh, area where patients, uh, families can sit and wait. This is a lounge uh, adjacent to um, the orthopedics and neurosciences ICU. Um, some nice glass windows for uh, lighting so that uh, you have some of that bright light. Uh, decent view of uh, central Missouri. Uh, here we are in a college town, so there's not a lot of tall buildings, which makes the university hospital buildings some of the tallest buildings in town, and it gives you relatively nice unobstructed views. We're looking here towards the south, and we can't quite see it, but just to the right of that view would be the sports complexes where the football team plays and the basketball team plays and other competitive sports. We're going to take the elevator going down. The medical center is part of the university proper. There's uh, no physical separation between the medical center and the university itself. So we really are very much part of the campus of the University of Missouri. Um, all the buildings of the medical center, including the research buildings, as well as uh, those involved in patient care, um, are all in contiguous with the buildings of the university itself. Here we are at the lobby. Um, that open area set up there is a nice courtyard that's intended particularly for cancer patients. That building also houses a uh, good deal of the um, Ellis Fissell Cancer Center. We're moving now towards the main lobby entrance. This is where patients and families would normally arrive, and uh, those windows straight ahead that we saw just a moment ago, and we'll see again now. There we go. Right straight ahead to the left is where people would enter. Right over there to the right is a cafeteria which has nice food, nicer food than most of us take advantage of. We quickly usually go to the doctor's lounge. That's a nice area to sit with some open windows and some nicer food to order. Right now during coronavirus, this is an exit that is not being used for entry. You saw that ominous sign, no re-entry. We have controlled points of access right now to try and help keep everyone safe during the coronavirus time. But on a normal day, this is the area where patients would have driven up. This circle drive is where people would have come to drop off patients. Looking here over to the west is the emergency department. And that's a helipad right there as well. We're a level one trauma center. And right there across the street is the VA hospital, the Harry S. Truman VA hospital. There's a bridge underground so that if we had to go back and forth between the main university hospital and the VA, you don't have to expose yourself to the elements, but you certainly can if you wish, and on a nice sunny day like this, I would want to do that. Here we are from the outside, looking back towards the hospital itself, um, uh, which of course is a complex with buildings that were erected at different uh, times, different years, so you see a little bit of different architectural style. Now I'm gonna continue to walk outside and we're going to take a nice leisurely stroll outside since it's a nice day and head towards the uh, uh, University Physician Medical Building where we see our patients in the outpatient setting and once again uh, the uh, next-gen Precision Health uh, uh, Center that's still under construction. We're walking along Hospital Drive, which is an east-west drive that um, is on mostly the southern boundary of the medical center, although it goes through the center a bit. To the right are parking garages, and uh, we can't see it here, but to the right is the Missouri Orthopedic Center, which is a standalone. There's the parking garage. And the Missouri Orthopedic Center is a standalone uh, complex for both outpatient and surgical orthopedic care. Um, neurology residents will sometimes go there for a consult, but for the most part, uh, when neurology residents are in the hospital, their consults are in the hospital building itself. Just to the left, I think we've already passed it, is a, is a field where there's uh, crops that are being tested. It has some sort of historical significance. I wish I could remember the name of it, but it's a uh, special site that's maintained and is protected uh, for historical value, if uh, not the ongoing value of testing crops. We are a Midwestern university, and agriculture is an important theme. Now, um, normally we'd be able to access the university physician's medical building, which we see, see here straight ahead, through a tunnel that goes underground. 
Um, right now, that's uh, not being used because, again, we're trying to control points of access. So I'm going to walk through the main entrance on the outside, which is the entrance that patients and families would use. That entrance is also being monitored and controlled for access during the coronavirus time. Uh, at all these control points, people are asked questions and they have to have their temperatures checked and so on. This would be the main drop-off for the uh, clinics. Now here we are in the neurology clinic itself. Um, that was Dr. Shaw, one of our movement disorder doctors we just saw walking alongside there. Uh, we now take over the entire floor. This used to be a floor shared by other medical services. Now neurology has the entire third floor of University Physician Medical Building. Um, over down on this side is where I usually sit. To the left there behind the curtains is where the Botox is put together. There is Dr. Leaniger, one of our epilepsy attendings, getting ready for the day. And this is the area where my nurses usually sit. And I don't see them here right now. There's one. There's Jennifer uh, on the red team. I'm on the red team for whatever that's worth. And here's one of the patient care rooms, um, standard things that patient care rooms should have. And here's the swamp where I sit and a neurology learner at the ready.